Well, welcome back to the channel. Now it's a bit hot at the moment. I'm filming this in the middle of a, a short duration of heat wave that we're currently experiencing in the UK. And uh, if you believe everything you see on the news, it's Armageddon. The whole world's going to come to a stop because temperatures are in well, the forecast to be in the high 30s today, but it's the bike's telling me it's 28 degrees, which is still pretty warm for the UK. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I've got a bit of a cynical view about some of the reporting around this, but I'm not going to get into that debate on this um, on this channel. What I am going to do is make a little bit of a video about riding in hot weather. I suppose the timing's good for that, isn't it? You know, I've done cold weather riding and wet weather riding. Let's do a hot weather riding video on a hot day. Um, some of you may well be going touring over the summer. You might be riding around some of the hotter parts of Europe. Spain, Portugal, Southern Mediterranean. If you are, I'm jealous. Might be a trip I'm going to do next year, perhaps. Thinking about a trip to North Africa next year on the bikes this stuff will be really relevant to that trip so I'm going to give you my five tips for riding in hot weather and I'm going to start with your riding kit it's very easy to think oh, I'm only doing a short journey I'm only going to be 10 minutes on the bike I'll not put my gear on I'll just keep my shorts and t-shirt on my trainers and I'll be fine and I'll be comfortable on the bike and you'll see quite a few people doing this prioritizing comfort over safety and believe me it's not worth it you know back when I was a traffic officer in the police I could, there's two accidents in particular that stand out to me in this respect both of whom both, both of whom were motorcyclists both on sports bikes actually and both wearing shorts and t-shirts one had trainers on one had flip-flops on flip-flops on a motorbike um, and both of them were doing very short journeys remember the majority of accidents happen within a sort of five minute sorry a five mile radius of your home address because you're just nipping out it's a quick trip not concentrating things can happen it's usually somewhere urban lots of junctions things going on and neither of those accidents were fatal I should say but they both ended up with some really really serious long-lasting lifelong life-changing injuries as a result and they were awful injuries as well they were really traumatic huge amounts of skin loss resulted in many many numerous skin graft operations you get the picture so I often think when I see somebody riding in that kind of kit not that it's kit is it shorts and a t-shirt even just normal jeans and a t-shirt I often think that person must have no imagination whatsoever they can't have so there's the old saying goes dress for the slide not for the ride it's important that you wear a good kit but there is there is good hot weather it's motorcycling kit available these days you know by its very nature normal motorcycle kit is heavy heavy duty heavy wearing it's there to protect you from the weather we don't often get hot weather in the UK so it's there to protect you from the usual crappy weather that we get but that it becomes a problem on a day like this you don't have to spend a fortune um, I treated myself to this last year of um, a mesh jacket uh, this is great it's got all the required sort of armor in the arms and shoulders it's got a back protector in it but at the same time it's completely vented uh, when I set off earlier on this afternoon I only got up to 20 miles an hour and um, it was lovely it's like riding in your t-shirt but you've got that protection that you need when you're riding it um, I'm wearing just a pair of motorcycle jeans Kevlar jeans there's a little bit of a compromise with some of this kit it's perhaps not as protective in an accident as you know a full leather suit will be or a full textile suit will be but for me I'm I, I think that compromise is worth it 
it keeps me relatively cool on the bike at least when we're moving got a bit of airflow through me um, and also the sweat doesn't collect either so the little tip is you know wear something that wicks the sweat away from your skin I've, I tend to wear cotton t-shirts that wicks the, the, the sweat away from your skin and then it'll evaporate through the vented jacket um, so there's other materials other t-shirts or sh shirts and vests and things that you can get that will wick that sweat away but that keeps you more comfortable on the bike because you're not getting all clammy and, and sweaty it's evaporating and that's how the sweat cools you down isn't it evaporating off your skin um, the other thing is as well you know open face helmets are quite nice in this weather I have an open face helmet but they get a bit windy above 50 miles an hour does an open face helmet um, and you can start to get you know bits of stone chips in your mouth and your teeth all that kind of stuff it gets a bit uncomfortable uh, so you know best advice is always to wear something that's either full face or a flip front like this helmet um, and this is a showing Neotech, it's a Neotech 2 and it's homologated to be ridden with the chin piece open which means you can legally ride this on the road some, some of the open face helmets you're not allowed to ride them with the flip front open but this one is and you are allowed to ride it with it on but I don't tend to do that above sort of 30 35 miles an hour again it starts to get a little it starts to pull your neck back a little bit with the wind resistance but even the sort of full face sports helmets things like that they will have plenty of vents in them make sure all the vents are open this one has a nice vent on the top that opens lets a nice flow of air all around the top of your head inside the helmet it's also got a vent on the front the chin piece Unfortunately, I have to keep that close when I'm making these videos, otherwise you can't hear what I'm saying, but uh, worthwhile exercise making sure that all that stuff is open on your helmet. So, that's tip number one, the kit. Tip number two relates to hydration. I'm going to sound like your nan now, sorry. It's very, very easy to get dehydrated on the motorbike. You're out here, exposed to the elements, getting hot all day you haven't got air conditioning like you have in the car that you can switch on and off your body temperature really is at the mercy of the elements and that constant sweating means that you're losing fluid out of your body all all day it's really important that you constantly replace those fluids dehydration could be really dangerous you know especially when you're doing something as complex and technical as riding a motorcycle over a long distance and one of the most significant symptoms of dehydration is you can start to feel dizzy, get headaches it affects your ability to make rational decisions if you're badly dehydrated or even if you're partially dehydrated and actually if you're feeling thirsty you're already dehydrated thirst is, is your body's way of telling you that you need to get some water on board or get some fluids on board so with, again at the risk of sound, not sounding too patronizing make sure you're stopping regularly you should be having regular breaks anyway if you're out on a long ride or you're out touring you should be stopping every hour and a half anyway most bikes have smaller fuel tanks and they'll need filling up regularly unless you're at a GSA or something like that and when you stop keep an eye on your pee I'll look at the colour of it. If it's dark in colour, you're dehydrated. The lighter or clearer your pee is, the better hydrated you are. And you should still be having a wee regularly during the day. If you're not, again, you're in danger of getting over into dehydration. So you should be drinking enough, not just to replenish your sweat, but to make you feel like you need a wee every now and again. Um, I invested in one of these last year it's one of these camelback drinks things so it holds three litres of water on the, in my backpack so before I set off today I stuff that full of ice cubes and fresh water and it's dead easy for me to stop just for a couple of minutes flip the front of the helmet up have a quick drink and then away I don't even need to turn the bike off but even if you're out for a shorter ride, I know on the sports bike it's a bit of a faff, you haven't got much space to spare anything, but stop somewhere and get a drink. If you're commuting, keep a bottle of water, 
in your top box or in your rucksack just in case you know you get some bad traffic and you're stuck you can't filter through there's an accident something like that you're not going to be sat out in the baking sun for hours with nothing to drink so that's the second tip keep yourself hydrated the third tip relates to your vision now bright sunlight glare especially early in the morning later on at night when the sun's low on the horizon that can really cause you some vision problems and there's a few ways you can deal with it I use a helmet with a drop-down visor in it which I have to say is really good and really convenient you can get tinted visors for helmets but you've got to watch the legality of them in the UK they've got to allow at least 50% of light through and really you should only be using them in daylight you've got to you know, keep a clear lens, keep a clear visor for night time as well the problem comes if you've got a tinted visor when you come to a, a tunnel or something like that where it's suddenly very dark or you're going under some trees but you can of course just flip a visor up you can use sunglasses as well but there's the issue with sunglasses it's not that easy to take them on and off is it once you're on the move on the bike coming to a tunnel or it suddenly gets darker you're gonna to have to really stop to get those sunglasses off or faff about an awful lot which you don't want to be doing on the bike but there is some value in having something that shields your eyes from the brightest glare of the sunlight and the fourth tip relates to the environment that you're riding in uh, the first thing I'd say about that is you know the motorways UK and on the continent, anywhere really, are very very exposed roads there are trees and embankments at the side but they don't provide much shelter, they don't provide really any shade so it's a good tip if you can to get off the motorways and use the A and B roads I'm on the road down to Sebba now, look and it's pretty sheltered, lots of trees lots of shadowy areas yeah, it was 30, 31 degrees before when we um, when we're in a more, more exposed part of the A6 that's dropped to 27 degrees now just because it's a bit more shaded here so keeping off the motorways, keeping on the side roads obviously that's not always practical is it? you've got to weigh that off against how long do you want your journey to be and you know how far are you going in a short space of time but if you can do at least for part of your journey get off the motorway and you'll enjoy these roads a bit more anyway much nicer to ride, a bit more challenging and the other thing I wanted to talk about in relation to the environment and the roads that we're riding on is that hot temperatures certainly above, I don't know, 30, 32 degrees that sort of temperature that can start to affect the road surface it can start to affect the asphalt, the tarmac on the road surface and there is a possibility certainly on some older road surfaces that can start to break up uh, you'll especially see this on roads that are frequented by heavy goods vehicles and other heavy vehicles buses, tractors you'll see tyre marks physical sort of ditches if you like starting to appear and also any, any areas where the road surface is starting to break up will get much worse much more quickly when the, traffic, when the temperature is really high so you should already as a motorcyclist be keeping a good eye out for potholes and surface defects and things like that but be especially careful of them those tyre tracks that I'm talking about they can be particularly problematic when it comes to corners because you want to be taking different positions on the bike and you know they, they, they're not easy to cross over at speed they can cause you problems as you cross over in and out of those sort of ditches if you like destabilize the bike in a corner they can just make it feel wobbly so keep a careful eye out for those and try and keep on the raised bit of tarmac in the middle compromise your position for safety remember it's important that. and the fifth tip I wanted to talk about is the bike You've got to keep an eye on the temperature of the bike Now most, uh, well, it's like the majority of motorcycles I think these days tend to be water cooled, liquid cooled now it's a more complex way of cooling an engine it requires more components, a radiator, a water pump, a 
all the additional water jackets on the engine and stuff the more expensive to manufacture but the more efficient at keeping the bike cool now on this bike I can adjust the settings on the dashboard so that I can see you know water temperature oil pressure tire pressures all that kind of stuff not all bikes are as complex as that but they should have some way of warning you if the bike is starting to get too hot might just be a light on the dashboard which is enough so the first thing I'd say about water cooled or liquid cooled engines bikes is just keep on top of your fluids when you're doing your weekly your fortnightly checks on the bike make doubly sure that the oil level and especially the coolant level is exactly where it needs to be any drop in coolant level means that the bike and the amount of coolant that's in it is working harder to keep the temperature down, to keep the temperature appropriate for the bike. Now even on a really, really baking hot day and a water-cooled or liquid-cooled bike, you shouldn't really have any issues of overheating if the bike's in good condition and well serviced, as long as you keep moving. Because it's the airflow over the radiators that's keeping that fluid temperature down to the appropriate temperature for the engine. If you have to stop, the problem then is that the, you get this sort of heat soak from the engine. The engine's really warm and the, the heat soaks into the engine and when there's no airflow over the engine and over the radiators especially, that's when the temperature can creep up very quickly. Now, most modern bikes, the water-cooled will have fans on the radiators those fans will come on once the temperature gets up the electronics will sort all that out for you so if you hear your fans coming on you know that the engine is getting up towards the top end temperature wise certainly water temperature wise and if you're going to be stuck and stationary I don't know maybe you're on the motorway the motorway is blocked it's good advice to turn the engine off let it just cool down of its own accord you're not sitting there, temperatures rising, fans coming on, engine working hard just to keep its own temperature down. Much better just to switch it off, get off the bike, stretch your legs for a bit, until it's time to move off again. So don't idle, don't let it idle for too, too long if you're going to be stationary for any length of time. Now, the other way of cooling an engine of course is air cooling and um, since motorcycles were first invented we've had air cooled motorcycles and there's still a lot out on the roads but it is perfectly possible for an air cooled motorcycle to overheat the cooling on an air cooled bike is done mostly through those sort of fins that you see on the side of the engine that are cast into the engine and the cylinder head and those fins, when there's air flowing over them, even at slow speeds, even on a hot day at 15, 20 miles an hour, they'll keep the temperature of the engine nicely down, just where you want it to be. But the, the real risk, again, for air-cooled engines is stationary, sitting there with the engine ticking over, with no air flowing over the engine, that's when they're more likely to overheat. Um, now, obviously, they don't have a water temperature gauge, because there's no water in the engine it's more difficult to keep an eye on the temperature but you'll know if, if, a, if an air-cooled engine on a motorbike is overheating you'll know it'll feel really hot in between your legs to start with and they don't run right they'll be down on power but the funny noise is the pink which is pre-ignition and pinking is really obvious, it's like a clicking noise when you try and accelerate, it just clicks and the bike doesn't feel on form and it misses a little bit and pops a bit. So if your Echo bike's doing that on a hot day, likely it is, it's probably overheating and it's time to give it a break. And that's the trick really. If it's overheating, find a shaded spot, switch it off, let it cool down for 20 minutes, that's all it needs, without the engine running, in the shade, come down to a reasonable temperature and it should run fine after that. The other good tip with air-cooled bikes is make sure the oil level is topped up and checked regularly. You tend to hold a bit more oil than water-cooled engines. The oil is part of the way of keeping the temperature down to the reasonable level, to the appropriate level. 
So if you let your oil, even if it's sort of halfway down the dipstick or halfway down the little window that you check the oil or however else you do it, it's not going to be as effective at dissipating heat. So keep your oil topped up and check it regularly when the weather's like this. It's worth mentioning as well that your tyre pressures can rise when the weather's hot. Anybody who does track days will tell you this. Set your tyre pressures cold at the start of the day and they'll very quickly rise after a few hot laps. Um, we're not pushing the bike as hard on the road but on a really hot day you could see an increase in the tyre pressure during the day. It might be worth just checking it halfway through your day especially if you're touring around Europe or touring somewhere where it's really hot. Might just be worth letting a little bit out at midday when you stop to have a break. But don't forget you're taking it out because those pressures will drop overnight as the bike cools down so you might need to top them up again in the morning. And one other little last bonus tip just before I end the video. Bike kit, you can feel very very enclosed in bike kit. You can feel like there's no gaps anywhere. It's protecting you all the way around. There's no gaps. Um, it's easy to forget that there's little gaps where your skin can poke through, especially back of your neck, under here. If you're fair skinned like me or if you're ginger like Andy, get some sun cream on it, get some Factor 50 on it, top it up regularly because you'll sweat it off and you'll thank me for that one. And 30 turbo, nice. So that's it for this video, I hope you didn't think it was too patronising, it was worth mentioning some of that. I bet some of you will have some good tips as well for riding in hot weather. If you have, share them in the comments below. If you like to ride around with a nice lolly down your underpants, share it with us, we're all friends here. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm in the middle of a series of videos about how to pass an advanced bike test at the moment, you might find that useful or interesting. And we're off to India again in September. I'm going to make some videos over in India. We're going to hire motorbikes right up around the Himalayas. So I'll put all that stuff on YouTube later on in the year as well. And don't forget to go and have a look at the website as well, reglocal.com. There's loads more information there about advanced and performance driving and riding. Information about the books that I've written that you can get from Amazon. And about how you can get a day's driver or rider coaching with me. If you fancy it, if you fancy a ride out some of these roads, drop me an email and we'll sort something out. But for now, it's time for me to stop and have a drink. Follow me on advice. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.